My name is Dr. Charnel Wolverton Sihan. I am so excited to introduce to you my 80 card deck of crystals, oils, and decrees. Yes, all these things are frequency. And guess what? You and I are frequency. And when we apply modalities of high frequency, we actually change our frequency. So check out these cards, have frequency in your home, and bring your upgrade today. Well, hello. My name is Dr. Sharnell Wolverton Sihan. Very, very excited about this amazing episode. So cool. Craig and I have been really looking forward to this. Um, my name is Charnell and Craig is here and we're here with Stephen Harefield today. He is, um, I'm going to let him explain about him, but I am going to share about how I was even introduced to him. It was pretty cool. And even the fact that we're doing this interview is pretty freaking cool. Just the synchronicities of everything. Um, but before we get started, please go ahead, hit like, love, share, all the things, subscribe, you know, make sure that um, you can get this out and be notified about any other upcoming events that we have where we have a lot of things going on, including our membership and um, get on that newsletter, get on the subscribe. Um, Craig, nice having you back again. Good to see nice to you. Be back. Anything, <laughs> anything you want to share before we get going here? Uh, no, like I say, I'm uh, I'm coming into this, um, you know, uh, fresh, and uh, like I say, I'm excited for where it goes. I've I've done looking at some of uh, Doctor Harefield's uh, work, and it's right up our street. I love what he what he's got to offer, so I'm I'm looking forward to digging in. Awesome. Well, I found out to give a little history to to share. I shared this with the doctor um, on the phone when I talked to him, but. Uh, I haven't even talked to you about this, Craig, but I have a friend who lives in Alabama and her and her husband are in the military and she contacted me about this metaph metaphysical Bible and asked me if I knew anything about it. And I was like, you know, no, that's one. I mean, I've heard a lot of different translations. I have a lot of different translations and I'm not really in the church scene um, and I don't think she is either. And so anyway, I wasn't, I wasn't even sure what it was when she brought it up. I was just like, no, don't know anything about it. And so she set like a screenshot and said that she had been really studying it and looking through it. And that it was just opening so much in her mind of opportunities and things that she hadn't thought about and different perspectives. And she, she just thought of me basically when she read it and was like, this is something that you really need to get. And so when I went to try to find this book, I didn't realize how difficult it would be because it's, it's not very easy to find. Um, and when I did find it, it was a lot like huge amounts of money um, because it's just so looked for, I guess, and sought after. Um, but anyway, so I ended up getting it's the metaphysical Bible. And here it is. And you guys can find it on his website, probably, um, which he's going to give all that. And we're going to have all the links here, too, in, in the show. But I have I have not read it yet. I just recently got it, like maybe over a month ago, and I still have some things before this to get to it. But I did score getting me one, and then I also got his book on karma because I'm actually doing a class on karma right now, and I noticed that he had this book as well. So I was like, oh, I'm gonna have to get both of these and check this guy out. Never ever knowing that I would even speak to him or have anything, you know, related or connected. So fast forward, one of my um, dear friends and coworkers, someone I've known forever, Craig, you know, Leslie Davis, mm -hmm. um, she calls me one morning early or she texts and said, I had this weird dream about you. Call me when you get a chance. And um, I had this book sitting in my bed for about three weeks when I when I first got it I I keep it literally in between in the bed Brian had been out of town I had four or five books that are just sitting there and then I, I wake up in the middle of the night I would just go to it sometimes I didn't get a chance to really look at it but it was just like I don't know why it felt like safety or comfort or just a weird vibe like a good weird vibe like just to have it around and I had two other books there um, with the intention of reading them. And so she texts me and says, as I call her, she goes, I had this weird dream last night. 
that you were interviewing this guy for your podcast. And I know he's written this book called the metaphysical Bible. I don't know if you've ever heard of him. And I was like, at first he, he didn't, she didn't say the metaphysical Bible. She just said your name. And she was like, do you know, you know, Dr. Steven, have you heard of him? And I, at the time it wasn't like clicking. Um, so I was just like, no, I don't think so. And then she mentioned um, the metaphysical Bible. She's like, oh, he wrote this. And then I think he even has a book on karma. And I was like, what? And so I take a screenshot of this book that was sitting next to me. I said, I've been sleeping with this book for three weeks. And she's like, you're kidding me. And this is also not the easiest book to find. I mean, I had to really, really dig around and like bid on eBay and all that mess. So hence the eBay um, receipts still in the book. So she's like, I, don't, I said, I don't even know how to contact this guy. I don't know anything. She was like, here, I found his website. So I, I look and there was a contact number on there. I called and lo and behold, he called me back and I was like, <laughs> what? And so we had a few conversations a little bit back here and there and he's agreed to be on. So I'm so happy. Yay. Wonderful. Right. So we're literally manifesting a dream here. <laughs> literally, literally living my dreams or living yeah. her dreams. I don't know. So she'll be excited about this. And I know many of you will be too, but so without any further ado, unless Craig has anything just burning to say i think we can just let him I'm get into this yeah, yeah go ahead tell us a little bit about you and you know who you are what you do give us a little story of your little snip of your life i know you're obviously <laughs> can't sit here forever and give every detail but yeah i want to hear about it um craig you said something interesting when you said we're all manifesting this if you and everyone really realize how truthful that statement is, it would make all of our lives differently. Uh, I'm just going to offer everybody a thumbnail sketch. They think their lives are hard, and there's a really wonderful reason for that. Uh, but when I came into this world, uh, I had an extremely abusive dad, and I was his favorite target. And I went from that into the military, into a combat zone. And I started looking at the sky one day and asking, why in heaven's name are you picking on me? What did I ever do to you to piss you off this much? And then there was a lot of events that happened that I didn't put two and two together. But the universe was showing me that... Uh, I was going to find out the truth of who I actually was. And after I survived that combat zone, by the way, got wounded three times. Mm. I found myself studying psychology so I could figure out my own head. And while I was in that combat zone, I encountered Zen monks, incredible, neat people. I didn't get to spend as much time as I would have liked to, but one thing that stuck in my mind, and Zen, by the way, stands for fast path or proper use of inner tuition or intuition or inner learning. But the thing that they said that stuck out of my mind is be aware of my urges and follow them if they felt right. Mm -hmm. I had no idea what they meant, but here I am in my senior year in college. Knew I was going to graduate. For six months, I'd had this overpowering urge to go to India. And I remembered what the Zen teacher told me. And I knew I was going to graduate, finished my final, sold everything I had, bought a pack, sleeping bag, and a tent, got an open-ended round-trip ticket to India, found myself in Delhi going, my God, what am I doing in this godforsaken country? Following my urge... I'm going to really give you the short version. I ended up in the northern edges of the Punjab of northern India, desert region. I was having a cup of tea, and this voice behind me said, we've been waiting for you. Wow. I, did, I didn't turn around, didn't do nothing, just kept sipping my tea. And then this soft-spoken voice said, your name is Stephen, is it not? And after the hair stopped standing up on the back of my neck and I looked around and didn't see Rod Serling, so I knew I wasn't in the twilight zone. <laughs> and I turned around and looked at the softest, most gentle, 
brown eyes I'd ever seen. And it was two Tibetan monks. And I said, yes, my name is Stephen. How? And before I could ask, how the heck did you know that? The other one looked at me and said, you're here to learn, so come with us. Mm. Wow. And I thought, wow, I got nothing better to do. Over six years later, I came back to the United States. After a seeing, learning, hearing, and listening to some of the most amazing people anybody could ever encounter. I was not the same. I was grateful for my dad after all those years when all I wanted to do before I went to Vietnam was to kick his ass. Excuse my language. So I <laughs> had the chance, didn't do it. But when I left India, and saw him later, I thanked him for being the incredible teacher to me that he was. Wow. And that little simple idea, even though it had been a path through hell, everybody out there, if your life is hard, that's because the universe likes you <laughs> and it wants you to be better then you're living it just means you're not necessarily ordinary follow along person that you are your own divine entity stuffed in flesh and it just wants you to see that and when you see that your life will change you know i came from a life of pure turmoil into a life that i find so amazing so astounding and even in this encounter here and what craig said all we can do is create if we stop for a moment even tying in the idea of karma mm -hmm. if there is a creation and i say if because that's an absurd idea um it came from something and we all came from that same thing it was the cause and through the use of karma, cause and effect, we came into being. We are living karma. And we were given the gift of cause. And we can cause so much and create is all we can do. I don't know about you guys, but I was not born with an eraser in my hand. Life is real and I can undo nothing. So I just make certain that in whatever I do, it's the best that I am capable of being in that moment. The most often asked question that I've ever been asked is this, why am I here and who am I? Well, here's the funny thing, Charnel and Craig, the response to that is in the question. You are here just to know who you are, not what you are. You're not your body. You're not your hair. You're not your bank account. You're not your family. You're not your girlfriend. You're not even really your body. It's just your vehicle. I happen to live in a Ferrari. Some people choose to live in a Volkswagen. Okay. It'll still get you there. I just would like to do it smoothly. And because I know I'm cause, then whatever I manifest is going to be darn near exactly what I want. And let me ask you two a question. To give you a thumbnail sketch of the power of the human. When you have fond memories of someone that you haven't seen in a long, long time, and you feel really warm and good inside, thinking about that person what usually happens within a short period of time do you hear from them do you yeah. get an email do you get a phone call and the first thing they invariably say is, is i was just thinking about you yeah i see you charnel you got a girlfriend but you did you actually did that you connected to them God, if we if everybody only knew what they teach in monasteries, you two are familiar with the term crown chakra, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. 
What we don't realize about that thing, it's the lotus flower that you see Buddha sitting on, that he raised his physical being to be lifted by that divine idea. And here's the funny thing about that. I can think to either of you, and if you are accustomed to your crown, you'll hear it. I have people in Copenhagen, Denmark say to me, they can ask me a question in their head. And no matter what time of day it is here, they will get an answer and they would say to you, it sounds just exactly the way that Stephen would say it. Wow. Which means the thousand petal flower means that you can be in 1000 different places at one moment in time. And you better have your marbles ready, because if they aren't, you're going to get overpowered by everything you ever dreamed could ever even take place. Well, that's my opening about me. <laughs> <laughs> I could sit and listen to you for hours. <laughs> I, I, you know what? I uh, have done several shows on Coast to Coast with George Murray. Mm. Uh, and, and the second time I was on there, he made the statement globally that I was a dangerous man to ask a question of because what you would get would be an understanding, but you would not get an answer. <laughs> <laughs> that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, it's interesting that you have this. Um, uh, we have another thing in common because when you went to those guys or whoever with that unction to go somewhere and they're like, we've been waiting for you. Um, Craig would know I had a similar thing where I just felt this unction to go to Alabama and that's where I met Bob Craig mm -hmm. and when I walked into this um, I went to the conference and then afterwards went to this coffee shop and he was there with two other people and basically pulled out a chair and said we've been waiting for you and that <laughs> literally changed my my total direction of my life like a million percent and that's how I kind of jumped into really embracing intuition um all the DNA skills that God has given us and you know I guess because it, when I was born and and you know I didn't I didn't go to church or there wasn't anything that I you know, was brought up into this had an encounter early on at four years old with Jesus and um, saw Jesus and had a whole sling of stuff happen, to, you know, went to my family and what have you. And then it wasn't until I was moved, moved to Louisiana that I started going to church just because people kept asking me and I went and it was sort of just morphed into that. But, um, but I was always told anything psychic or intuitive was like the devil and that we're not supposed to mess with all of that and then it wasn't until i met bob that he was like nope that's in the bible and this and that and really gave me permission to really dive into those abilities that we have to transport walk on water know what people are thinking help people you know just as long as it's used with the undercurrent of love um which i'm looking at bob i keep his picture all the time so if we have we have that in common too which is always interesting to have these things in common but yeah. craig you want to jump in at all i just want to hear more of, of your, your story really like i say it's um <clears throat> i i've always we, we sean and i talk a lot we, we we at a similar time around 2016 had what we call like a spiritual awakening and uh, both grew up in very christian well, well you know i grew up very christian environment channel sort of jumped into that when she got older um and as a part of this kind of what what I call an awakening, um, I realized how because I I went down the kind of mystical path, Christ centered mystical path, and how much it ties in with with Buddhist thought. Um, and and you know I, I remember uh, is it that I can't can never pronounce it now that thick knack hang as he called, yeah. um, yeah, and and he said that you know he, he, the Buddhism is a practice; it's not a religion. We don't worship Buddha. He says you can be a Christian and practice Buddhism. And and I saw it. I thought this practice we can apply this practice into whatever 
faith or belief system we have. Um, what could you go into that a little bit more about the, how it interlinks and, and crosses over? Sure. Um, <clears throat> being in a monastery was one thing. Being a monk in a monastery is is not a simple task by any people think monks don't do anything. You got to be kidding me. Um, that's a twenty four seven job on yourself. But what it awakened into me, Craig, was, and by the way, I was born and raised Catholic. Hmm. And I knew what they were telling me when I would go to church was not right. Hmm. And by the way, Charnel, the Bible does not say what Christianity tells you it does. Exactly. And I'll, I'll get to that in a minute. Yeah, yeah. But when I left the monastery, I was still so curious I began to study ancient prophecy as a fanatic. I, uh, one of my hobbies is collecting Bibles. I had a, a client and friend who traveled all the way from Paris to where I live to see me in person. And he brought me a Bible that's 1806. Oh, wow. That's the oldest Bible I have. But I have them from 1806. I think the last one is 2002. And I have every version of the Bible. And here's the nutty part. I've read them all. <laughs> I've been in the Middle East studying about the one that we call Christ. And gosh, we could do a whole show on that dude alone. Yeah. And, and, and what he was actually about. So I understand the Bible. I've studied every ancient text you can get your fingers on. And in India, they have a beautiful saying that says all paths lead to the one creator. And all of those paths are acceptable. When we look at religion, they are an idolized structure and hierarchical structure is what they are. Mm -hmm. And I will say this, the essence of the truth is still in the Bible. In Charnel, that book in your hand that you held up to Greenland, it's in there. Mm. And I want everybody to know that in India, he is known, Jesus is known as Isha, I-S-S-A. I've heard that, yeah. yeah. And he was there for the 14 missing years of his life. And what's comical, being a Buddhist, he quotes all 12 principles of karma in the Bible. <laughs> the one that they attributed him this statement to is not his. He said, what you sow, so shall you reap. That's the great law of karma. That's the prime law. That's the first principle of the whole idea. And if you think about that one statement for absolutely every single thing that you do, it's going to create a ripple effect and it's going to come back to you. I used to be a very angry man. Now, I don't think either of you could piss me off even if you tried <laughs> because it would be hysterical watching you attempt it. It would be hysterical to me. <laughs> And that's the funny thing when I'm watching people and they're angry and they would like for me to become angry too. And I'm watching the theater. It's great. You can't get a better front row seat than that. But it's because of all of that structure they've been taught in Buddhism. As you said, Craig, perfectly stated, it's a way to live as you. Every religion wants to put you in a package Christ himself was against that if everybody thought about it. Yeah. Who, who was his biggest, who was the people he was always against in those days? The religious. The re yes, the religious mm -hmm. icons telling them they were full of mud. I could tell you point blank, and it says it in the Dead Sea Scrolls, Christ's last request was simply, do not make a religion out of me, for if you do, my true message will be lost. And by the way, the marriage in the Bible that's talked about where Jesus turned water into wine, if you know ancient philosophy, that was Jesus's own wedding 
when he married Mary Magdalene, was his wife. In fact, the book of John, Mary actually wrote. John didn't. Wow. And it tells you right at the very last chapter of the book. It tells you who the author is. I didn't know that. I knew yes, the part about the marriage, but I didn't know that. Yes, ma'am. Very last, within the last eight verses of the book of John. And here's how it does it. And here's, uh, this is a paraphrasing, so understand that. It says that I am the one that always kissed the master on the mouth. A dude kissing a dude in the Middle <laughs> East? I don't Middle think East. so. No. Not, not in that part of the world. They'd still kill you. That's so true. You know, and, and, it, and it also says, I am the one that always walked behind Jesus. Women always in those days walked behind their mate. Huh. Not if it wasn't their mate, they didn't follow them. They would walk beside them. So there's two distinct hints right there at who that was. So, and um, Craig knows this, and I don't know if I shared it with you, Doc, but um, we tested scalar ways on, on Jesus, and a thousand is the highest that we found on anybody on the planet um, except for Mary Magdalene. They were equal 1,000. Which again, a thousand highest of anyone we tested, but yet they were a true match for each other. You should test me. <laughs> I don't. I don't like no, to test no. people without permission. So oh, I, I, just, that, I just. I just. Unless I they're just, already dead, you know. I just. I just gave it to you. Okay. Um, well, yeah. I'll have to let, test let me. Let, let me. The Bible is metaphor. It's not literal. It's like. Here's one for you. The word human. You ever thought about what that word actually means? H-U-M-A-N. Here it is. Hue meaning light or energy. Genesis says, let there be light. Poof. Okay. Man is form. Energetic form or light form is what that means. So everywhere you see the word man in the Bible, Replace it with the word form. Wow. That will change the entire meaning of the book. It's not about males or females. It's about form is what that is. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Here's what they represent. Matthew represents what's going to happen to you and you're going to experience from a wow. divine perspective in the physical sense of yourself. Mark, which used to be the largest book of the four Gospels, but was condensed down and is now the shortest. And I know why, but I'm not going there. Mark is about how your mind is going to operate and what it's going to go through and what you can do with it. Luke is your emotional self. And John is your soul, the feminine side. If you look at the portrayal of the 12 disciples, Jesus, and Mary Magdalene, that's 14 people. Mm -hmm. Gee, think about the seven chakras. There's a masculine side and a feminine side mm -hmm. to every chakra. Mm -hmm. So the caricature of Mary and Jesus being wed in union was the symbolism of what we are to do in form. Ancient texts tell us that when you make the two into one, you can say mountain move from here to there and it will be given you. Mm. That's the two. And you can go right down the apostles. Peter was known as a very ego-based, arrogant dude. Judas, the thief, so to speak, that wasn't. That was planned, by the way, Christ and, and Judas knew what they were going to be doing because there is a plan and there are things that happen that bear it out. So if you take the 12 apostles and take, say, Judas 
and oh, and Thomas was the doubter. So if you take Judas and Matthew, you have a, a thief and a divine being. Mm. Okay, you could take all without going through all, all of 12 of them. Each one is the exact opposite of the other with counterbalances chakras. Okay, Stephen, you're really nuts now. No, really? Book of Revelation. The challenge, so to speak, from God said, let those, those, anybody, with the ability to open the seven seals to the book of life. Seven seals, just see, what could that be? How about seven chakras? Mm -hmm. yeah. And then it says people warred against it and fought against it, which means they really worked and were trying to force it into happening. And then it says, and then enters the lamb. The lamb religion attributes to Jesus Christ. No, the lamb is symbolism of if you work with the seals gently, and in loving kindness, they will open. Hmm. Why? Because you have to be gentle and kind to yourself to open the truth of you to yourself, hmm. which means no condemning, leaving it alone. Nobody on this planet has ever made a mistake. I don't care what you think or what you say. There's no such thing as a coincidence. Everything happens for a purpose. If you get the purpose, things will not repeat. Have you ever noticed how you have cycles in your life, how things seem to come back and come back? It's going to do that until you get the lesson and the knowledge, and then it won't repeat. It can't. <laughs> My life very seldom repeats. It's like a straight line, which is the way it's supposed to be. Now, the Tibetans taught and teach, and I could be glad to share it with you. I won't do it in the podcast because I don't want to rookie handle it. You two could do quite well with it. I could teach you a meditation that's specifically designed to open those seven seals. And when they do, it's astounding. Can I share a personal story? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, please. I had been working with this meditation for over three years, and we had journeyed to Gyoto Monastery in Nepal. And I'd gone up on the roof. It was late in the day, just prior to sunset. And I began doing this meditation. And I went out. First time, I became a blank screen. Hmm. But what I was watching was all of these events. And when I came out of the meditation, it was just after sunrise. I had been up there in that meditation for almost 14 hours. Wow. Man. And what I saw was different lifetimes. Uh, are you ready for this? Mm -hmm. I was uh, Genghis Khan's right-hand man as a Mongol, and my name was Subhaktan. And you can look that up. <laughs> and I saw what a brutal dude I was. But the point is, I saw the lifetime after that and how much loving, compassion, and caring I had. So what it showed me was lifetimes that I was operating from in this one and that I could use them with wisdom. I didn't know when I was in Vietnam, that's who I was. But there was some crazy stuff that everybody said I should have been dead over in a combat zone. Mm. And I didn't know at the time I was operating as Subhaktan, an absolute warrior. And it kept me alive. I saw it later in that meditation. And I was shown the relationship wow. between a modern war and that time. My point is, anybody can do that. Mm -hmm. You are your own book of life. You, have, you actually have access to five memories. You have conscious memory, which we know about. Subconscious memory, which we know about. Cellular memory, which is where illness and disease comes from. You, you, you tell me you got something going on with your body. I'll give you a monk's perspective, which blows my own personal doctor's mind. Because mm. she'll ask me, she goes, if somebody has this, what is it? How does a monk look at it? <laughs> and I tell her, and she's going, what? That's crazy. Okay. 
So if, if, if cellular memory causes disease, guess what you can fix? What you're doing to your own cells. Right. Your fourth memory is your DNA. In 2004, two Nobel Prize winning geneticists said that the DNA acts like a memory. Revelation, the book of life, seven seals. You access that book of life. It's you. It's funny. I know my story. I'm going to say this right here on the interview. In Southeast Asia, I was given a number on how many times I had reincarnated. When I was in Northern India, that's thousands of miles away, a Zen faction and a Tibetan Buddhist faction, they gave me the exact same number in Northern India, down to the digit, 1,400. And 76 lifetimes is how many times I've been here. Wow. And it's like people don't believe in reincarnation. Okay, if you don't believe in reincarnation, then you can't believe in eternity and infinity. And mm -hmm. Christianity doesn't believe in reincarnation, mm -hmm. which, by the way, in older Bibles, there are 146 re uh, uh, references to uh, reincarnation in my 1800s Bible. Modern Bibles, there are only three references, and they're very veiled. Mm -hmm. So if infinity and eternity are true, then reincarnation has to go along with it. Mm -hmm. The only reason we have the whole idea of creation is because logic. Buddhists get out of logic. Intuition doesn't. Logic discounts in, intuition, yet everybody has it. Everybody has it. Very few use it. I do. I could talk with you about both of you, and I've never met you. And I'm sitting across country from you. Because I feel you, and I know how to read energy. Anybody can do that. Mm -hmm. If you get your logic. Look, logic is great for some things. Without logic, you couldn't walk through a forest without tasting the bark and all the trees because you'd be bumping into them. So logic helps you to walk through open spaces. Logic helps you determine uh, where a chair is like behind me. Mm -hmm. Logic allows you to see that chair. Mm -hmm. What you don't see is what's really there. Everything is energy first. Whatever energetics do, the body is going to do, and material form is going to do. Everybody's so steeped in logic if ancient prophecy is true, and we move from a three-dimensional reality into a fourth and even fifth dimension. How does logic work there? It won't. But awareness does, and in Buddhism, they teach you about awareness. And that's what Christ and himself Buddha, Zoroaster, Zarathustra, you name them. That's what ancient Gnosticism is all about, which Mary Magdalene was leading after Christ took a break. By the way, Charnel had an encounter with Christ too, except I was 25. Oh, wow. Dude has a sense of humor. <laughs> no, he does. <laughs> I was told to go wait for a great teacher and that uh, I was to sit on this rock in this clearing. I climbed up on this rock. There was a spot that looked like it had a chair. There were two, looked like two places you could sit. So I sat on that taller one and I'm sitting there and all of a sudden I hear this, <clears throat> <clears throat> you're sitting in my spot. <laughs> and I turned wow. around and looked and I went, oh, yeah, okay. Oh wow! That's he, crazy. Does, he does not look like how he's pictured at all. Wow. He's an he's an Arab. Mm. Give me a break. He's not blonde haired, blue eyed. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it, it's very soft brown eyes. Yes, he was pale skinned. Yes, kind of. Mm. And we sat there and chatted about all kinds of crazy stuff. Go on, give us something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what it gets. Um, okay.
Here's what he said. If you really only knew how perfect you are, that you are made in the image of divine self, divine being. He said, you can only do that through two sets of eyes. You can only see your own perfection through your ego, which would destroy you. Mm -hmm. He said, but if you look through the eyes of divine truth, you would see that perfection as it is, and it would humble you. And you would have authority over what you see. Over what? You, over what you see yourself. Wow. And he says, once you have authority over that, you have mastery over all things. Interesting. Wow. And I, I thought, whoa, dude. <laughs> That was wow. awesome. But so how you, how did this metaphysical Bible come out of all of this? Like what gave you the, I mean, I know you follow your leads, but I mean, this is a pretty, I mean, this looks like it took a while to get this. Uh, this uh, like actually, uh, actually, that book took myself and my editor six months. Wow. wow. And that's 808 pages. Wow. And in it, there's a bibliography that's probably 20 pages to support where the information came from. And if I were to be candid with you, I would sit down and write 30 pages and I would have no idea what was even on the paper. Oh my gosh. Real None. download. I understand yes. that. It, that's happened. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Download, download real time. Mm. And I would have to go back and read it. And I was blown away. Literally. I get it. That's what happened to me every single time. Uh, but not I, the Bible. <laughs> That's pretty well, cool. Well, when you understand metaphorical meaning, the Bible is blatant. Mm -hmm. I mean, Genesis. The, uh, <laughs> uh, no, I love the subject. But at, at I'm sure I'll hear from Christians, and I look forward to it. Uh, they're fun, actually. I love it when two Christian women come into my front door and want to know if I want to be one of the 144,000 saved. I just walk over, pick up my Bible, bring it back to them, open the Revelation, and I read the verse. It says, excuse me, ladies, it says, 144,000 men will be saved. And then I'll close <laughs> the Bible, and I go, so what are you going to do? And that, well, we're going to go talk to our minister. Yeah, go ahead. I never see him again. <laughs> That's funny. But if you look in Genesis, supposedly, according to the Bible, God created all of reality in seven days and mm -hmm. then it went and had a couple of bongs. Um, I mean, that in humor, people. <laughs> um, but when you read the first two chapters, First two verses of chapter two, here's what you read. First one, yet nothing had yet been created. No, wait a minute. You just went through the whole thing in the first chapter and how it all was created. Chapter two or verse two says, God looked at Adam and said, Adam, now name these things. And as Adam began to name them, they came into existence. And that's what the rest of chapter two tells you. But let's understand something. Adam is not a man. Adam represents thought. Hmm. Thought. Eve represents emotion. So even human wasn't in existence yet. Hmm. It was just thought and feel there was craig and dr charnel male and female two energetics you two ever uh, are you familiar with the uh initials y h w h mm -hmm. oh yes yeah 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 okay it's letters in ancient text that says you can't pronounce the name of god but they took those four letters 
and turned it into Yahweh, Yevah, Jehovah, God, to match logic. Wrong. Mm -hmm. Here's what those initials mean. Y is like a poles of a battery, is source. It represents your soul, your source. That is a negative polarity or negative charge. The first H represents Adam, as in the Bible says. Adam represents thought. That's a positive charge. Now you have two poles to a battery. W represents Eve, emotion or feel, a negative charge or vibration. The last H, as the Bible says, the last born was form or body. Wow. Human, human, hue meaning light or energy, man meaning form. So you have soul is energy that brought about conscious thinking that brought in the ability to feel itself and sense its thinking and put it into form called you. Wow. No coincidence, no accident. And I learned wow. that as a Buddhist monk. My God, can you believe it? I remember wow. the day I looked at Lob Singh, one of my teachers, and asked him about creation. He looked at me, slapped his thigh, and went, creation, what is that? And I said, the beginning. He goes, you Americans and your logic. He says, <laughs> he says no, it's always been here. There, wow. is no, there is no beginning, and there can be no end. Think about the simple word infinity. If infinity is real, there is no beginning, there is no end, and I'm always curious why modern day science is always looking for the middle of it. Really? How do you find the center of infinity? You have an infinite number of possibilities in that idea. Mm -hmm. So good luck. Uh -huh. <laughs> the Bible says, you, Craig, Charnel, me, every human listening to this, were created in the image and likeness of the creator. Y-H-W-H. -H. Wow. And then, it, and then it goes on to say, now you are just like me. Y-H-W-H. -H. Jesus in the book of, uh, in the, uh, I think it's Matthew. He says, even the least among you may do these things and greater things may you do. So God says you're God. And Jesus says you're God. But yet religion wants you to think there's only one person that could do that. Right. Oh, excuse me. There's no power and control going on there. Right. <laughs> the last thing they want people to do is to think for themselves. Exactly. Love saying one, one of my teachers had been a monk since he was four years old, had no idea what his age was or how long he had been in that monastery. He looked older, but to somebody in their mid-20s, I mean, anybody above that is like, yeah, okay, like mm -hmm. I'm finally there now, so what? But what Lob Singh could do and the way his mind operated, he was living, breathing, pure awareness of being. Wow. He yeah, asked especially me. Especially he didn't have a cell phone. <laughs> uh, you, you, you know what's funny? They do now. Really? I saw a monk. Yeah, I took a group to India uh, to help them awaken. And as we were coming back, there were monks walking around with laptops and cell phones. And I'm going, oh, my God. <laughs> You've got to be kidding me. I guess today, no. Of course, the monastery I was in didn't really have electricity, so I don't know how you charge it up. Mm -hmm. But then knowing some of those guys, you may not need a charger. True. I've heard, but, yeah. But, but Lob saying didn't rely on logic. I don't to this day. I use it, yes. I don't even think about what I'm going to say to you guys. <laughs> it just comes. 
that's how that's exactly what Bob always said as he yes. talked about just he he always said a prophetic teacher meaning like you're never going to use notes you're just going to speak nope. from your heart you're just going right. to I'm going to I I've had people attend to 8 hour workshops with me and never look at a note don't even bother to bring them out with me if I don't know the subject why would I even be talking about it right mm -hmm. But I go by something Christ said in Mark 13. You can look it up. What he said was, is do not fear for what you are to say or to do, for in that moment, it will be given you. Yes, yeah. mm -hmm. absolutely. So because of that, would you would you two enjoy a, a simple thing that they teach? Yeah, go for Tibetans. it. It's simple, but I'm going to share with you even anybody listening, you're welcome to attempt this. Uh, but you're going to find it to be the absolute most ridiculously hard thing you've ever gone to do. Keep your mind and your thoughts right behind your eyes. Hmm. Do not let them drift. There is no future. There is no past. There is only the moment that you are in. Mm -hmm. I had a gal from Oklahoma, uh, Call me one day and she said, Stephen, I made it for 30 seconds. And I went, good. Make it a minute now. Mm -hmm. But that took me four years in a monastery to master that. But wow. it is worth it. It is worth it. I can even meditate today with my eyes wide open and not be disturbed. <laughs> wow. That's because if you have your mind and your thoughts right behind your eyes, what could disturb it? Mm. Nothing. Mm. That is mastering yourself. And once you've done that, you can say, mountain, move from here to there, and it will be given you. But here's the other amazing thing. Because you understand yourself so well, you will understand every other human completely. And yes, you would even have authority over illness. I'm uh, going to share something. This is not gloating and can be documented. I'm in my 70s, but my doctor says that my physiology, my body, is that of someone in their 30s. Wow. The only exercise I do is walking, hiking, and playing golf. And when I'm playing golf, I ride in a cart. Man, I ain't walking on that. Are you kidding me? <laughs> but here's the funny thing. Uh, a year ago, this past March, I had uh, my appendix removed. And the surgeon said it's unusual. For, in fact, he said I was his first in my years. And then he said the average age he does uh, append appendectomies on is people in their mid-30s. Wow. Now you think about what my personal physician said. Right. And what the surgeon said. Right. So there okay. you go. You you made it. <laughs> yeah. But but the point is, is that's all done by up here. Right. I, su I suggested to you two earlier yes. that every cell in your body resonates to your mind, to your mind and thoughts. Mm -hmm. Those cells then, as mentioned in the third memory, cellular memory, that can end up creating illness. If a woman... Uh, uh, if a woman has breast, uterine, or, or ovarian cancer, that's generally brought on by repressed guilt. Mm. Men, when they get testicular cancer, it's because of repressed guilt. And when you talk with the person and you realize that about them, get them to remove the guilt and the cancer will go away. Mm. But you remove the guilt out of their head. But that's what I enjoy about Buddhism that there are no coincidences. Mm -hmm. If I go out in the garage right now and stumble and fall and break my nose on the hood of my car, well, that's my fault for not paying attention. And it ain't going to happen because I'm with my body and I am observing what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. But if that were to happen, then the universe is saying, Stephen, you just weren't paying attention. Check this one out. <laughs> and then I end up breaking my nose why because I didn't get the lesson 
We've all heard the statement that when the student is ready, the teacher will come, right? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. That actually has two meanings. The first one is they encounter a Charnel or a Craig and you help them with understanding. That's one way. It's like myself and my teachers in India. They were my teachers. But the truth of that statement is when you are ready, your own soul or your own divine nature will teach you. So you become your own teacher and your own student. That's awesome. And you are going to be the best teacher of you in the entire universe. That's but so what's cool. funny, what what's funny about us humans, we don't listen to that voice of conscience. Mm. The ego demands, commands, and yells. The soul only whispers. It says, Charnel, don't do that. And you do it. Then karma will come into play as your teacher. You see, here's the funny thing. Everybody has an ego. But guess what your greatest teacher is? It's your ego. <laughs> In ancient texts, that's Satan. Mm -hmm. The ego in ancient texts is divined as Christianity, Satan. Wow. <laughs> but here's the funny thing. The ego only plays on an individual's weaknesses. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I had never met a monk that had a weakness after they'd been there for a while. Right. Because they understood them. And when you discover a weakness, you strengthen it. Mm -hmm. So it matches the rest of your being. We walk around in parts. No. You can walk around in wholeness. The ego masters the human most at the moment. But when you master the ego, you will answer one question that I would ask both of you and I do any person that's working with me. If you had absolute power and you knew that you had it, and it's assuming you don't, what would you do with it? If you could wield divine energy, what would you do with it? And if you cannot answer that, you cannot have it. Hmm. But when you can understand what you would do with it, then you can have it. That's awesome. Well, you know what's funny? Life is not that big of a mystery. The best secret, if there is one, and we all know this to be true to a point, the best way to hide something is to make it obvious. Mm -hmm. Let's say, Charnel, you are what we worship. You are God, except your name happens to be Charnel. And you created all of this thing, magnificent thing called life. And you wanted your life to be exactly like you. That would mean you would have to have your creation find it. You with me so far? Mm -hmm. Okay, so my question to you would be, how would you hide it? And how would you get them to find it? Mm -hmm. it I can give you an understanding. Are you ready? Yeah. You would make it so simple and you would make it so obvious that nobody would buy it. And you know what's funny? I got that out of the Bible in Mark and Luke. Hmm. In Mark, it says to enter that kingdom, you must have the mind of a child. Yeah. And in Luke, Christ turns around and says, to enter the kingdom, you must have the innocence of a child. Mm. So here's the funny thing. Do either of you ever approach yourself innocently after all these years? And if not, how come? Mm. You're not who you were yesterday. That was yesterday. 
You are who you are now. You are in your own personal evolution constantly, ever unfolding, ever higher to a greater divine self. And all one has to do is acknowledge and own it. And that's the only thing Christ meant when he said, I and my father are one. I could sit here and say two things without hesitancy. I am in this world, but I'm not of it. Mm -hmm. This world has nothing to do with me. And I find it interesting and somewhat humorous to watch what humanity does. Hmm. And the second thing, no question, I and my father are one. There's no difference between us. And Buddhism is what did that. I went to find me, and I didn't know it in the beginning. And then one day, it dawned on me. Wait a minute. I don't have my mind. I have other people's minds. I have other people's view of me. And then I set out to get my own view of me. Both of you are perfect and there's nothing you can do about it. And here's the funny thing. If either of you disagree with me, you're just showing everybody on the show why you can't see your own perfection and you won't even see that. Because here's the funny thing. You cannot disagree with me on that point. You can prove me wrong and I'll let you. But how I see you is how I'm going to see you, no matter what you do. Mm -hmm. You see, when you develop God consciousness and you realize just how sacred you are, that you are a living temple as a being, you have the ability to think, which is a dynamic that no other living thing on this planet has the ability to do. You can think for yourself, as yourself, and create through your own manifesting who you choose to be. Frankly, I think it's more fun living as a divine self mm -hmm. Not going against the grain, not going with the grain, just moving across it and watching it, going, wow, it's all right in front of you. Every time you look in the mirror, it's staring right back at you. So, how'd I do? I could sit and listen for hours. That was, yeah, <laughs> super cool. Yes, and we have like that has gone by like so 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 fast. So yeah, yeah. Um, love to do it again. Lots, and, yeah, and Craig, we might and, have and, to have and, you back and talk and, about. And, and Craig Char Charnel has my uh, phone number, and she can give it to you. And I'll, I'll talk with you on the phone. I'll recognize you in a heartbeat. Yeah, <laughs> I would it, love it, that. It, I, it, I would. I'd it, love it, to it, have you come back it, and teach on just this one topic alone because i think you and i are on the same page i haven't read the book yet but yeah. um we've I, I done a, a series I, I i have a suggestion for you when you read it read it all the way through first okay okay then pick one principle one of the laws one of them and play with it and i'm gonna tell you right now the hardest one everybody runs into is the fifth one okay the law of the mirrors. Okay. Why? And, it, it, and you get any questions, you can call me. I know we play phone tag a lot, but that's fine. But in the law of the mirrors, here's the essence. Whatever you see, you see in life is in you first. That's right. Mm -hmm. So if you are disgruntled about you, guess what life is going to deliver you? Right. That's so this, cool. It, and that's where it's our power gift. sits. It yeah, is. It's a gift. And and I I have. And, a... and, and, in fact, it's funny you would say that. I'm working on a book right now and it's entitled The Gift. Really? Wow. Yeah. Wow. Well, my mentor always said a gift that is not received becomes a burden. Yes. And 
if we don't was look he at everything that supposedly looks bad, if we don't see the gift in it and the lesson in it, then it becomes a burden. Yes. And yeah, and then you have to repeat. So it's like, yes. even in the, I mean, I had something happen this morning, even that really rocked my world. It was just like, caught me off guard, blah, blah, blah. And then a minute, I just centered myself for a second. And I was like, you know what, what is the gift in this? And how do I navigate through this? And I'd, I'd, I'd like to impart something for both of you to pay attention to, to help hopefully help your lives become simpler and the listeners too. Okay. Be, be aware of two words, what and why. If you ask yourself, why is this happening? I'm going to make you a promise. You're going to have two experiences. One, whatever is happening is going to continue. It has to. And the second thing it's going to do is it's going to make your logical mind so busy attempting to figure it out. And it has to continue until your mind can figure it out. Right. Once it does, it'll stop. But do this. Ask yourself, what am I being shown? And I can make you a promise. What am I being shown? shown. Yeah, not why. Uh -uh. That's awesome. When you ask, what am I being shown? Logic can't come in. Why? Because it doesn't know. It can't answer the what. So it has to observe. The second thing. Just as soon as you get it, at what's going on, it will stop. Because you got the information that was necessary. So always ask what, never why. Mm. Uh, get rid of that. Mm. I mean, well, you can look at it. You can look at another human and say, hey, why did you say that? I prefer, what do you say it? Right. Promotes well, what, what happened this morning and when I had that like, shift in perspective it ended up feeling bad at first but led to a very deep and wonderful beautiful conversation that apparently needed to happen and that i wasn't aware of and it and ended up being like a amazing part of my day mm -hmm. but um but you know if we're not aware like you mentioned and not asking the right questions then it can come into like this victim y thing where like, why me and blah, 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 and you know, all this other stuff, which just is gonna mirror more opportunities to f figure it out and get bigger and bigger and louder and louder until we actually crack the code. But anyway, that's a big, huge thing. And I know we're way past time. Yeah, we are. But, but when yeah. You, when you wanna hook up again, I'll be here. Yeah, before I'm we go, too, can you please just tell everybody where we can find you, um, your website, you know, like uh, that it, kind of it, stuff. And Craig, it, I don't it, know what else you it, have. It, it's all pretty simple. Uh, everything related to me is actually my name. My email address is stephen at hairfield.com. <laughs> it's just my name with at and dot com thrown on it. My website is hairfield.com. Um and it has all my contact information, uh, my phone numbers. So if anybody wants to reach out and learn to understand stuff, I'm here. That's amazing. That's beautiful. That's what I do. Yeah, awesome. like I say, when, I, when I'm listening to you, honestly, I'm, I'm in like a trance. I'm just like, just coming out of it. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, uh, no, like I say, it's, it's, it's you. when you were talking, it was just like bubbling up. I could feel it. You know, um, and I was just enjoying every minute of it, and I didn't. I don't want it to stop. <laughs> Good. You know, I, I share with people all the time. Pay attention to how you feel when somebody's speaking, because that'll let mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Love to do awesome. it again. You yeah. Want... Thank you so much. We'd love to. We awesome. Can, we, well... we can unload, we can unload karma all day long. <laughs> awesome. Well, we will definitely have you back, and just Thanks. I want to just say. A special thanks to everybody because this is Thanksgiving and Thanksgiving is such a great day, such a great time to have gratitude and to remember family and to remember our own 
greatness and God in us. And um, so, yeah, anything that you have to say, I know you, you don't do Thanksgiving, Craig, but, uh, or you, yeah, no, 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 you don't do it. No, no. every day should be Thanksgiving. Every, I guess. Day, every day is Thanksgiving. Every day should be Thanksgiving. <laughs> totally. Awesome. Totally. Well, every day should be Christmas as well. I agree. Totally. Well, definitely, definitely sending good vibes to everybody watching and um, or what catching the replay. But uh, Craig, any final words before we we pop off for today? I'm just really grateful that you you uh, came on, um, and obviously, much thanks to you as well, Sean El, for all the work that you put into these shows. That again, um, people don't realize what goes on behind the scenes, um, and just just to remind people again about the membership, um, do do jump on with that. Um, and we'll get do some one on one stuff. I'd love to have uh, the old doc. Uh, sorry, not old. The doctor here, the the thirty year old doctor, <laughs> um, on with us on on a live on on the membership. Maybe we could sort something out there. But yeah, oh, that would be cool. Yeah, awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Is I, I think that would be a really cool Q and A, wouldn't it? Very so, cool Q and A. Oh my time. gosh, what a great idea! Thank you for that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. We'll talk offline. <laughs> awesome. Thanks, okay. guys. Well, you guys have a thanks. wonderful rest of your day and thanks again so much. And you guys enjoy your time and your family today. And we will chat again. You guys go to swiftfire.org. Please get on the newsletter. Please hit subscribe. And sure, it would be great to have you as a member as well. And if you decide to join us in our community, we'd love to have you and we love hanging out. And we will see you next Thursday at noon. Um, we, we do something every single week Thursday. So put it on the calendar and we love you so much. Have a great one. We'll talk soon. Bye. Okay. Bye. Hi, I have some really exciting news. My name is Dr. Shornell Warburton Sihan. I am with True TV and we're so, so very excited to announce that we are doing membership plans. So what does that mean? Um, well, you have the opportunity to participate and help this program keep going, number one. And if you have anything to do with us in the last few years and um, have gotten good information or what have you because of our show, we appreciate your support. Also wanna let you know, we're not gonna quit doing what we're doing. We're just going to add different content, new content, fun content, whether it's a panel, surprise guest, Q&A, a personal reading, group readings, group frequencies, whatever, we're gonna have it. So. Thank you so much for wa watching. The link will be up here for you guys to participate. I'd love for you guys to join us and helping keeping this show going on and look forward to spending some quality time with you guys as members. All right. Thanks for watching. Bye.